Soldiers willingly, sometimes foolishly, risk their own lives to keep their comrades out of enemy hands. Accounting rules give financial institutions flexibility about when they choose to recognize venture capital profits. The difference between microeconomics and macroeconomics is a bit like the difference between biology and medicine. Knowing that certain genes increase the risk of cancer is relatively easy. Figuring out exactly which people will get sick, or how to cure them, is a lot more complicated. The most distinguishing element of my novels is that I try as hard as I can, within the context of a popular commercial thriller, to make them feel authentic. Drawing on real locations and real events is part of that authenticity. The Fed's ability to raise and lower short-term interest rates is its primary control over the economy. Microeconomics is the study of how specific choices made by businesses, consumers and governments affect the markets for different goods and services. For example, a microeconomist might examine how price changes affect sales of apples relative to oranges. Enron Field in Houston, the Trans World Dome in St. Louis and PSINet Stadium in Baltimore are just three of the modern-day coliseums named for companies that have found new homes in bankruptcy court. Never underestimate the power of Abby Joseph Cohen. Determining how many asbestos suits have been filed or how much companies have spent to resolve them is difficult. Cases are filed in state and federal courts, and many companies do not disclose their spending on settlements. Before Jason Bourne, before Jack Ryan, there was Bond, James Bond, the original two-dimensional, world-saving secret agent. On the New York Stock Exchange, all buy and sell orders are routed through a single specialist, guaranteeing that most small trades can be matched directly. But most larger trades are delivered to the specialist on the floor of the exchange by human brokers, a system that big investors view as increasingly inefficient. Although not well known outside Wall Street, Freddie Mac and its corporate cousin, Fannie Mae, are two of the world's largest financial institutions and play a crucial role in the housing market. Macroeconomics is the analysis of the economy as a whole, an examination of overall supply and demand. At the broadest level, macroeconomists want to understand why some countries grow faster than others and which government policies can help growth. If only the human body could handle trauma as well as biotechnology stocks do. African runners regularly work out in the United States and Europe, and the International Olympic Committee sends some of the cash from the Games to Olympic committees in poor nations which use the money to finance their own programs. To finance deficits, the government must sell bonds to investors, competing for capital that could otherwise be used to invest in stocks or corporate bonds. Government borrowings raise long-term interest rates, stifling economic growth. Like many other banks and finance companies, Green Tree used a process called securitization to resell its home loans to outside investors. Green Tree Group thousands of these small loans into a pool worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Big banks have long had private equity divisions that put up capital for deals too complex or risky for individual shareholders to finance. Equity is the cushion that protects financial institutions from unexpected changes in the value of their assets. The greater the leverage, the smaller the losses required to wipe out a company's equity, leaving it without enough money to repay the people who hold its debt. For a spy novelist like me, the Edward J. Snowden story has everything. A man driven by ego and idealism, can anyone ever distinguish the two, leaves his job and his beautiful girlfriend behind. He must tell the world the panopticon has arrived. His masters vow to punish him, and he heads for Moscow in a desperate search for refuge. Evidence of defendants' lavish lifestyles is often used to provide a motive for fraud. Jurors sometimes wonder why an executive making tens of millions of dollars would cheat to make even more. Evidence of habitual gluttony helps provide the answer. Healthwell is just one of several foundations that assist patients in making their insurance co-payments for expensive drugs. I know it's a cliché, but trust me on this. I once dated a Canadian. Canada equals boring. Information technology departments must spend enormous amounts of time and money worrying about integrating big computer systems with billions of pieces of customer data. Plumbing is usually boring. Even a war zone looks peaceful in most places, most of the time. 
The thing to do with mutual funds is to buy a couple of decent ones, set up an investment plan and then never, ever think about them again. Except maybe once a quarter or so when you take a peek at your statements to make sure that you have not accidentally been buying the Fidelity Peace in the Middle East Fund. It's one of the fundamental principles of the stock market, when interest rates go up, stocks go down. And along with financial companies and cyclicals, technology companies, with their sky-high price-to-earnings multiples, should be among the biggest losers in an environment of rising rates. Shareholder meetings are not usually the occasion for utter candor, or for that matter, arch sarcasm, by chief executives. Also, most people read fiction as an escape, and I wonder whether my books aren't a bit too grounded in reality to reach the widest possible audience. Even so, sometimes I wish I did have a little bit more flair in my language. I think when you have lawyers arguing over whether you can keep a detainee at 46 degrees, for two hours, that's not torture. It may be unpleasant, it may be coercive, but let's say what torture actually is, and that's not it. The market always, in theory at least, looks ahead, and it's always trying to take in every bit of information that it can as quickly as it can. You don't really care so much if the company made a dollar last year, you want to know what it's going to make this year. Over the years, I've spent time in Saudi Arabia, the Baqa Valley, Afghanistan, Jordan, and Kenya, among other vacation hotspots. The fact that we haven't faced another major terrorist attack on American soil since September 11th is a very significant achievement, and one that's easy to forget, it's the dog that doesn't bark. The American pledge not to negotiate with terrorists has been honored more in the breach than the observance from the moment President Ronald Reagan made it. Sergeant Bergdahl may have broken any number of military laws. As a reporter, I embedded for modest stints with American soldiers in Afghanistan and Iraq. When I'm asked about those experiences, I always say, and mean, that we civilians don't deserve the soldiers we have. I think in some ways what Snowden is, is he's a mix of a Cold War spy novel and post-9-11 spy novel. Studies show that Avastin can prolong the lives of patients with late-stage breast and lung cancer by several months when the drug is combined with existing therapies. Because Genentech is a leading developer of cancer therapies, some doctors also fear that the company's pricing plans for Avastin, around $8,800 a month, may encourage other companies to charge more for their own oncology drugs. Whatever the potential pitfalls, Banks are increasingly enthusiastic about venture capital, particularly in new companies with strong prospects in fields like healthcare and technology. Some big banks remain wary of venture capital. Traditionally, companies have made major announcements before or after the close of trading so that all interested investors and analysts are apprised of the news before trading resumes in their stocks. Of all the big internet companies, Yahoo is the most highly valued on a price earnings and price sales basis. In market valuation, Yahoo is worth about as much Walt Disney and the News Corporation combined. Rising interest rates are considered bad for stocks because they raise the cost of doing business and depress corporate earnings and because higher yields make bonds relatively more attractive than stocks to investors. For more than two decades, Barry Diller has been among the most respected, and feared, figures in the entertainment industry. Of course, the discounting of future earnings should hurt all stocks, but it should hurt technology stocks more than others, because so many of them are valued at extremely high levels relative to their current earnings. Robert M. Morgenthau, the Manhattan District Attorney, has seen a few financial schemes in his time. As the lead local prosecutor in the world's financial capital, he has battled frauds like the Bank of Credit and Commerce International, which stole billions of dollars from investors worldwide. Visit our website for more quotes, quoting.com.